How's it going everyone? I'm Walt the Film Hermit and today I'm going to be talking about the best space vampire movie that you will ever see and that's Life Force from 1985. If you like my videos please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel so much. Share as well. So this video is going to be a little different than some of the videos I've done in the past. I'm kind of going to talk about the whole kind of history of this movie and its history on home video and the main reason I'm talking about it is because Scream Factory just released a pretty good release of this film on 4k but there's some controversial um, decisions that they made or had to make so uh, there's been a lot of additions on this on home video of the year so I'm just going to talk about all of them and just kind of let you guys decide what you think which edition is going to be best for you so let's get to it let's talk about life force so what is life force life force is a movie based on a book written by uh, Colin Wilson and it's about space vampires it was directed by Toby Hooper, the director of Poltergeist. Now, this is a Golan Columbus production. This was like a kind of low budget uh, sci-fi horror production house from like the 80s that went under. There's apparently a really great documentary about them. Uh, they produced the last, the Superman 4 movie with Chris Reeve and a lot of other movies that were pretty bad in the 80s. Uh, this movie overall is bad, but I love it and a lot of people love it too. There's some good qualities to it as well. It's just, it's it's old, it's cheesy, it's it's batshit crazy, I'm gonna be honest with you. But I, you gotta have a little bit of respect for it and a little love for it, quite honestly. So this movie is directed by, uh, again, Toby Hooper, and he did this movie after Poltergeist. And the rumor back in the 80s was that Poltergeist was really directed by Steven Spielberg, because Steven Spielberg was the producer on Poltergeist, because the Director's Guild would not allow him to direct E.T. and Poltergeist at the same time. He apparently was very involved in the production of Poltergeist. He was involved in a lot of the casting and he was had daily set visits. And a lot of people say when they watch Poltergeist, they see a lot of Spielberg's uh, influence. So neither director liked those rumors and they always said that there was nothing to it. But I've actually heard that um, they actually, Spielberg had, not Spielberg, but the studio had to pay a fine because they didn't use Toby Hooper's name enough in the marketing material for the film. So that went a long way. So Toby Hooper wanted to direct and make his next movie big and put his name out there and show what he could do. And he is a very beloved filmmaker um, in the film industry. Um, so let's talk about the movie. The movie came out in 1985. It stars Steve Railsback, who for the longest time I did not know was my dad's favorite actor. I remember we were watching In the Line of Fire and when Steve Railsback pops up, my dad was kind of bored because that's a good movie, but it's kind of a slow buildup. We're watching it and then Steve Railsback just comes out and my dad's like, that's my favorite actor. I'm like, I never knew that. And since when do you know actors' names? But um, yeah, Steve Railsback is the star of the film and also Mathilda May in her first role and the great Patrick Stewart, who's like super young in this movie and also stars Peter Firth. So let me just explain what this movie is about. It's, it's completely batshit crazy. Uh, astronauts on a space shuttle. It's the year of 1985 where Halley's Comet is gonna pass by Earth. They go up near Halley's Comet and they find this spaceship filled with naked people. And they bring them back on the ship. Everyone dies on the ship. And this beautiful, beautiful woman who is naked through the entire movie, not like a little naked, but naked. Like, probably the most naked woman I've ever seen in a movie. And she just walks around like, like nothing. The funny thing about this is like, some people when they talk about this movie, they don't really like to talk about it because they're afraid they're gonna get canceled by saying how beautiful Mathilda May is, but most people don't care. They just be like, oh yeah, she's naked, it's great. They just go on and on about it. But that's not what the movie's about, but she's really, really naked. So if you're offended by that, you probably don't wanna watch this movie because it's, it's batshit crazy. So she is a space vampire. She doesn't suck your blood. She sucks the energy out of your body. And as she does it, she just walks around naked and has no problem with it. Uh, that's, that's pretty much what the movie is about. But you can't pull your eyes away from it because it's just so over the top and big and all the actors in it are great. And they're just playing this thing straight. And it doesn't matter how ridiculous the premise is. It's just, they just keep going on about how like, She's so beautiful and she wants to kill you and they don't care. <laughs> so I can't really put it into words. It just, I recommend if you're a fan of like older sci-fi horror movies, 
check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so we're gonna go through like home video release of this movie. So this movie came out in 1985. And honestly, because of a lot of things that I said about it, it didn't do very well at the box office. Apparently it came out the week that Cocoon did and it came out fourth in the box office and it made only about $11 million. So very, very poor, poor release. Uh, it was a box office failure and then it came out on home video that same year. So back in the 80s, we used to have this thing called VHS and that's how they put movies out. So this movie was released on VHS and beta back in 1985 and it was from Vestron Video, which has now got a name back where Lionsgate is actually releasing Blu-rays under the label Vestron Video, but this is back in the day the real Vestron Video released this film. And there was two cuts of this movie. There was a theatrical edition and then there was a international cut. Apparently there was a director's cut that never ever got released. Uh, apparently the studio thought the movie was too long and they made it shorter and most people prefer the international cut, but back in 1985, it wasn't available, at least not in the United States. So it was released on VHS in 1985, and then again in 1990 through Video Treasures. Uh, but again, uh, 85 was the year that the, the beta tape came out and the VHS came out. And again, a lot of you don't know what beta tapes were. Beta tapes were these smaller versions of VHSs that were actually better than VHS. But since VHS was better at putting more movies out, beta just kind of died off. And it, we never had a beta player when I was a kid. We only had VHS. There were more movies available on it and eventually beta went away. But now there's people out there that collect betas and you can buy betas on eBay and for prices that they're not worth. It's, it's ridiculous. But yep, 1985 VHS beta. And there was a laser disc as well in 1985. Uh, there was a laser disc from Vestron Video as well. That was a pan and scan laser disc. And it had the theatrical edition. It only had a stereo soundtrack on it. That's how they did it back then. So 1985, VHS, beta, and a laser disc. So come 1990, uh, there was a new VHS from uh, Video Treasures. Never heard of that company before. And then in 1996, eventually MGM, the studio that released the film, uh, released their own VHS of it. So it looks like uh, that VHS is the one that actually has the, uh, the new international cut. That was the first time that it was ever released on VHS. Um, Actually, not the first time, let me correct myself. The first time it was actually the year before. So the year before, uh, it was actually released on Laserdisc. This was the first time it was released in widescreen. This had the 116 minute, minute version. This one had Dolby Surround on it. And, uh, and this came out in 1995. Now, one side note about the Laserdisc releases for this movie is that for some reason, there was a Laserdisc just for the making of the movie. So. This laser disc had the making of Life Force and the making of Invaders from Mars, another film directed by Toby Hooper. Um, I'm gonna come back to this later and, and let you know why this laser disc release is important. So now we move on to the DVD releases for the movie. And the DVD, DVD releases for the movie, uh, we got the first DVD in May 27th of 1998. And this is the only DVD that they ever did for it. They did do a triple pack once that had Alien Invasion of the Body Snatchers in it, and that was back in 2008. But other than that release, it only had one DVD release. So I'm assuming uh, maybe it didn't sell very well. Uh, and this did have the longer cut as well. So now we're going into the Blu-ray release for the film. Uh, Scream Factory did a Blu-ray edition for the film. It was the Blu-ray DVD combo pack. And usually I love original poster art, but I have to say that this uh, artwork, uh, I'm gonna put the designer's name here because I didn't have a chance to get that ready for me as I'm recording this right now. But I love this artwork, it's absolutely amazing. This slip cover is absolutely amazing. When this re release came out, this is the first time I had heard of the movie. And it was this art that really caught my eye. But what happened was this came out June 18th of 2013. This release was so popular that um, they stopped making it. Uh, Scream Factory stopped making this release and they decided to make a release uh, that was a more of a bare bones release that didn't have a slip cover and didn't have uh, one of the bonus features. And actually that release I have, let me show you. This is it right here. So the main difference between this release and the collector's edition, no slip, and it um, was missing the making up feature. I don't know why for some reason they decided that they had to remove that particular feature, but they did. 
So that's what I ended up getting and it's the first time I ever saw it. So the important thing with this release is that it has the international cut on there. But when they um, put on the, the theatrical cut, it's like a, another version on the disc and it does, it's not encoded the same way. So the image quality is actually better on the international cut. So that's the one I watched. That's the one I've kind of gotten accustomed to. So that was the standard Blu-ray DVD combo. And I forgot to mention, it does have reversible artwork. It does have that really killer, awesome Space Girl artwork on the front side. And I just reversed it to the original artwork because of what I was doing before this video. I usually prefer the other artwork, which is rare because usually I love the original artwork. So that was the release that they did here. And then one thing I did forget to mention is uh, how bad most people consider this movie. Um, it's Rotten Tomato score is about 57%. But granted, you know, only 29 reviews were on there. And this is an old movie. There was no Rotten Tomatoes back in 1985. So these are just a few critics that decided to watch it and post a review. Uh, the audience score is no better. It's about 45%. But that's not really the best gauge, honestly, of whether a movie is good or not. Just I always want to put that out there. So let's talk about the, uh, the Steelbook release. So Scream Factory released the movie again on Blu-ray and it had a Steelbook. Now, when this Steelbook originally came out, I wasn't really crazy about the artwork on it. This Steelbook came out, it was August 14th of 2018. And I didn't read this before, but this actually had a 4K uh, remaster. It's a regular Blu-ray, but it had a 4K remaster of both the theatrical edition and of the international cut. So that was the biggest selling point for this release. By the time I realized that, they were all gone. The other thing I didn't realize about this release is that this release has the making of added back to the edition. So if you wanted the making of, it's on here. So if I knew that, I wouldn't have gotten it. But this, this steel book is completely out of print. And on average sells for $35 used. So, the big release that was coming out is going to be the 4K edition, which I have right here. So when I heard about this edition, I was like, here we go. This has got to have everything in it. And this will be the last time I ever buy the movie. They put the original poster art on here. There is no reversible artwork. So if you like the Space Girl art, uh, you got to keep that edition. So I started reading uh, things about this on Scream Factory's website. And a lot of fans were really upset. And the biggest thing that they were upset about is the fact that the 4K edition is only the theatrical edition. So a lot of people were upset about that. They're like, what's going on? Like, you've been promoting the international cut all these years. Why is it now that we have to settle for just having the theatrical cut in 4K? I was reading all the comments, a lot of people were mad and upset. And I could tell, because this movie didn't sell very well because they still have the posters available. Usually. When Screen Factor has a good uh, selling title, the poster is only available for the first batch of, of movies. Once those posters are gone, you can't get them anymore, but they're still there on the website. So the reason that I picked this version up is even though only the theatrical edition was available in 4K, um, the Blu-ray edition of the international cut is included here. And I figured it had to have the 4K remaster that was done in that steelbook. And this sold for $27.98, so this was cheaper than buying the steelbook on eBay from someone. So I decided I'm gonna pick this up. I'm cool with the Blu-ray of the movie, that's adequate. And so I got it. So once I got it, I started watching it. I threw the uh, 4K edition in just to see, maybe I might like the theatrical edition. I've heard a few people online say that they still, they like the theatrical edition. So it's completely different from like the first five minutes. The whole title sequence with Henry Mancini's fantastic score is gone. It instantly starts the movie. It has a different title card and it's got a truncated version of the discovery of the alien ship. And I was like, eh, nah, I'll put the other one in. And this is a good transfer. It has really good uh, image quality. It's a film transfer. It's clean. There's a lot more detail from the Blu-ray. But for a movie like this, I prefer the international cut. And uh, I did an A-B test. I put in the Blu-ray for the international cut and I put in my old Blu-ray for it. And it does look better. So it's the new 4K remaster. It's just not a 4K UHD disc. So for me, getting a slip cover, 
getting uh, the international cut, the 4K version, not having to spend $35 for it on eBay, thought for me is a really good deal. Some people, not so much. So main reason I wanted to do this video because I saw a lot of really good reviews on YouTube talking about this movie and talking about um, this release, but there's a couple things that people didn't talk about. And one thing people did not talk about is after I got it and I started going through all the bonus features, and we're gonna go through the bonus features right now. So the bonus features for this movie, it's gonna be Dangerous Beauty. It's like a 15 minute featurette where they just talk about the film. But Phil and May talks about her experience of getting hired on the movie and how um, she got comfortable with the nudity, but then like, she was like, years later, she was like, I would never do anything like that again. Um, she said she was comfortable because she was naked all the time and it was just kind of got to the point where it just like, it was a usual thing. Uh, Space Vampires in London, another feature talking about the making of the movie. Uh, feature called Carlson's Curse. There's a couple image galleries and there's a TV spot and a teaser trailer. Now, there's also a couple commentaries that you get exclusively on the international version. It's the director's cut. So, I didn't know this until after I bought the disc and I realized that the making of feature, they skipped it again. So, I don't know why Screen Factory did this and no one else is talking about this. So, when they did the original release, they included all the bonus features. Then they did a Blu-ray that took away the slip cover, took away just one bonus feature. And then they do a steel book and they put that feature back. And then they do a 4K Ultimate Edition. It's actually collector's edition, it says it right here. Collector's edition, slip cover, everything. And they put everything here except that making of featurette of the film. Now, it's a making of featurette of the, that was done back in 1985. So, I did something I'm not too proud of. I got this one. There was probably someone on eBay that got this, decided he didn't need this anymore. And I was like, I love this art. I want that featurette. I double dipped, it wasn't that much. It was like a, a little bit over $20. So now, the collection's complete. I got both versions of Life Force. And I watched that um, making of feature. It's actually pretty cool. The cool thing about it is like it was shot back in 1985 when they were making the movie. It has a lot of cool stuff in there. The cool thing also I like about that feature is it it's talking about the movie before it's released. So the idea of like they're going in it with uh, the best of intentions. They don't know it's going to fail at the box office yet. They're really positive about the work that they're doing. They don't know how it's going to be viewed in film history. So it's a really cool feature. So for me, I bit the bullet. I double dipped on it and I love this artwork. I'm gonna be honest with you, even if I had this before, I wouldn't be able to part with it just because this, this image design, this poster is amazing. So this is my 4K, this is my, my Blu-ray edition, but the Blu-ray here for the international cuts better. So I forgot to mention the reason why they did not put the, the director's international cut in 4K. Screen Factory put on their website that the film elements they had for those deleted scenes were from an interpositive so in order to convert it over to 4K, it wouldn't have a uh, substantial enough image quality to justify it. So it looks fine on Blu-ray, they try to put it on 4K, it's not gonna match the other footage and it's gonna look terrible. Apparently a lot of fans didn't care and they still feel that you know, Scream Factory did an injustice by not putting the international cut on 4K. Uh, I'm fine with the Blu-ray edition and I am fine that I now have this cool artwork in that uh, making of feature and I do have the movie on a 4K remaster of the International Director's Cut. So that's my little history of Life Force on uh, home video. Let me know in the comments what you think about a video like this. Um, did you like going back in the history of VHS, Beta, Laserdisc? Uh, let me know what you think about it. Like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel so much. Thank you all for watching. Stay with the Space Empires. Have a good day. Bye.